again, may we remind everyone to please mute your microphones. You may or may not turn on your videos. Thank you very much. Zoom. Magbayag. Stop smoking. Good afternoon, everyone. So while waiting, may I start welcoming some of the participants? So we have currently 309 participants all over the world. And we have one from, yes, Merry Christmas. And we have one from Romblon State University. We also have one from Daraga Albay. Bengkulu Province, Indonesia. Mati Davao Oriental. Yes, may we acknowledge the presence uh, Professor Dr. Navisar Nazir, the Global Coordinator of SWIFT Network. Good afternoon, sir. And again, may I remind everyone to please turn off your microphones before and during the event. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Okay, bye. Inter ah. Ayun na lang, tatlo na kami. Iwa na. Um, di ba lang sa istayaw? Eight, eight, six, seven, eight, 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 eight,
Anjay. Again, may we remind everyone to please mute your microphone, microphones before and during the event. Thank you. To the Commissioner of Higher Education and the Chairperson of the CBSUA Board of Regents, Commissioner Dr. Aldrin A. Darilag, or as you see, President of Central Bacal State mm -hmm. University of Agriculture, Philippines, and Conference mm -hmm. Governor, Alberta N. Rivera, our Vice President for Research and Innovation, Dr. Maria Dulce J. Musales, our Director for Extension Services Program, Dr. Lorena F. Fernandez, the Director of the Research Division, Dr. Ramona Isabel Ramirez. Regional Apiculture Center Director, Professor Lilia C. Pashona. To, the, to Professor Dr. Nalisar Nazir of Global, the Global Coordinator of Safe Network, Pacific Coordinator of Safe Network, Dr. Ravindra C. Joshi, and the key officials of our partner agency, the Safe Network. ASEAN or Safe Network Countries, our guest lecturers, Dr. Norman G. De Jesus, Dr. I. G. D. Pasek Mangku, Dr. Mahani S. P. M. S. I. C., Dr. Juan Iriani Ismail, and participants. Sao Shanghao, Ohio Gusaymas, Salamat Pagi, Gandang Hapon, Marina Hapon. Good afternoon. We are delighted to welcome you to the international webinar on stimulus. This discovery to technology utilization with the theme Alliance of Philippine Stainless B Beekeepers Upscaling Technology for International Utilization, sponsored by the CBSUA and Safe Network. I am Ms. Julie Amara J. Mustales, the CBSUA International Relations Officer and a faculty member of the College of Development Education, and I will be your moderator for this event. This international conference is an outreach webinar, which is open to the public and live streamed via Facebook Live of the Extension Services Division through the leadership of the CBSCA Office of the Vice President for Research and Innovation. To officially start our webinar, let's all welcome our beloved Central Beagle State University of Agriculture SUC President for uh -huh. Dr. Alberto N. Naperi. Thank you, Jam. To our dear 
Chief Commissioner and Chairman of the Board of Regents. Commissioner Aldrin Darila. Dr. Nubisar Nasir, Global Coordinator, Safe Network. Dr. Davidra C. Joshi, Pacific Coordinator, Safe Network, and CBHOA Consultant. To our resource persons, Dr. Juan Riani Ismael from University Malaysia, Tengganu, Dr. Mahani, STMSI, from Pajajaran University, Indonesia, Dr. Mai Edi Pasik Mangko, from War Madewa University, Indonesia, Dr. Maria Gimostoles, the Vice President for Research and Innovation, CBSUA, Dr. Norman G. De Jesus, Professor from Pampanga State Agricultural University, CBSUA Professor Lilia C. Pashona, the Regional Agriculture Center Director, Dr. Ramona Isabel S. Ramirez, the CBSUA Research Director, other university key officials, faculty and personnel, participants from around the world. Good afternoon. It has been a decade when our university started to venture in stainless steel technology. And throughout the years, we have been strongly involved in disseminating the goodness of the stainless steel technology. We train communities here in the region to adapt beekeeping as additional source of income. And our beneficiaries of the program stretches as far as the Kabihug tribe in Camarines Norte, where they usually maintain their culture of hunting and collecting honeybee from the wild. But today, after being trained by the university and mastered the stainless steel technology, they abandoned hunting and are now successful adapters of the project. The stainless steel technology transfer has been in the forefront of Central Bicol State University of Agriculture, as we declared it as our banner program. Hence, we are continually upgrading our effort to push forward the stainless steel technology developed inside our institution. During the height of the pandemic, our stainless steel products became the source of hope by our partner agencies. We distributed hand propolis sanitizers to local government units in our service area, as well as hospitals and health centers. That is why the CBSUA will not stop to pursue our commitment to bring stainless steel technology not only here in our region, but this time we partnered with Safe Network and came up with today's activity, the first international webinar on the stainless steels from discovery to utilization. Therefore, on behalf of the entire academic community, I would like to welcome you all to this program and let us share together a common aspiration by helping each other increase agricultural productivity through transfer of mature technology, and one of which is the stainless steel. Again, good day to everyone. May we all receive continuous blessings and good health. Thank you so much.
Thank you very much, Dr. Alberto and Naperi. Thank you very much for the support that you have given to the Stingless V Group. And now, without further ado, to give us an inspirational message, please all welcome the Commissioner on the, of the Commission on Higher Education, one of the chairperson, uh, the chairperson of the CBSA Board of Regents, Commissioner Dr. Aldrin A. Darina. Dr. Alberto Naperi, the SOC President of Central Bicol State University of Agriculture, and at the same time, the Vice Chair of the CBSUA Board of Regents, Professor Dr. Nebizar Nazir, Global Coordinator of the SAFE Network, Dr. Ravindra Josi. Pacific Coordinator, SAFE Network, speakers of today's session, and renowned researchers in their respective fields, Dr. Lilia Pasciona, Dr. Maria Dulce Mostoles, Dr. Norman De Jesus, Dr. Juan Iriani Juan Ismail, Dr. Mahani S.P., Dr. Igede Pasek Manku, to all the vice presidents, deans, directors, faculty, researchers, personnel, academician, students, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Good afternoon. On behalf of, on behalf of the Board of Regents of Central Bicol State University of Agriculture, I would like to express my gratitude to CBSUA, particularly to Pres President Naperi, for organizing this important engagement that will contribute to the advancement of research in the country and catalyze critical issues related to agriculture, science, and technology in the region and in the country. The value of research is enshrined in the Republic Act 7722, or the Higher Education Act of 1994, where the state, through the Commission on Higher Education, shall protect, foster, and promote the right of all citizens to affordable quality education at all levels, and shall take appropriate steps to ensure and protect academic freedom, and shall promote its exercise and observance for the, for the continuing intellectual growth, the advancement of learning and research, the development of responsible and effective leadership, the education of high level and middle level professionals, and the enrichment of our historical and cultural heritage. It is an opportune time that we discuss the science of bees and insects in relation to the survival of mankind. While seemingly a minor concern, bees are also one of the most important animals that is responsible for ensuring food security, sustainable agriculture, and a healthy society. In an article released by Time Magazine in the year 2013, it was noted that the bee population is decreasing rapidly. The article notes that in the United States, one third of honeybee colonies died or disappeared during the winter of 2012, which is a 42% decline from the previous years. The same study notes that given the significant deterioration of honeybee population in the country, the pollination of almond plants was also put at risk, in which, in the case of the state of California, is a $4 billion industry. Fruits and vegetables, such as cantaloupes, cranberries, and cucumbers, were also the subjects of concern 
due to the decline of the bee population in the United States. According to the head of the U.S. Department of Agriculture's Bee Research Laboratory, the human population are also very close to the edge. In order to address the significant role of bees to food security, the Harvard University developed the RoboBX wing to initiate ultra lightweight solar cells, which mimics natural bees in an attempt to explore the use of digital technologies in addressing the decline of the population. Researchers hope that these robots could maneuver around cramped spaces, potentially helping environmental and disaster monitoring. While we appreciate that there is significant research done in the United States regarding the significant decline of bee populations, we also need to increase the amount of research in this discipline that is contextualized in the Southeast Asian region. Thus, this initiative of launching this international research on stingless bees is highly critical, urgent, and important as this contributes not only to the field of biology, but also to the areas of labor and employment, environmental sustainability, and food security. Through this international event, it is our fervent hope that more studies shall, shall spring forth from our discussions and a stronger community of inquiry of research shall be established all for the advancement of meaningful knowledge generation. This will benefit not only the researchers in furthering their knowledge and scientific production, but also contribute to the advancement of our nation. May I highlight that the main role of higher education institutions, apart from providing degrees to our students and rendering assistance to our community, our higher education institutions are also involved in the analysis and scrutiny of persistent societal problems and the formulation of solutions and interventions, such as this crisis in the bee population. May we value the importance of research, not only as a cognitive, personal, and well pursued knowledge, but consider research as an avenue to collaborate and learn from the various conceptual and theoretical underpinnings of the scholars. As we proceed in our participation in this international webinar, may we be fueled by our curiosity, be grounded by our sense of compassion to help others, and always be humbled with the idea that research can be best done when we try to share our resources and be critical with the extant phenomenon. As researchers, we have this responsibility of acquiring knowledge and extending these concepts and data analytics for the betterment of others and the whole community of learners. In the Commission, we value the importance of research as research findings provide us not only increase global competitiveness, but because it provides us with more evidence and data to improve our policies and programs for the continued advancement of higher education. Through the realization of various research studies, our faculty are better trained and equipped to adjust to the new normal of education. Our institutions get to serve their immediate and wider communities, and our students get the education they most well deserve. We articulate these needs for the increased research support through the provision of grants to support various institutions. We endorse and provide research-based scholarships through the assistance of our regional offices and high technical committee in order to 
develop knowledge in order to realize production, dissemination, and utilization of research findings. The Commission's priority to advance the status of research in the country is also, is also articulated in the CHED Memorandum Order No. 52, Series of 2016, entitled Pathways to Equity, Relevance and Advancement in Research, Innovation and Extension in the Philippine Higher Education, where we recognize that the Commission should assist our colleges and universities to address various needs, such as, first, improving the research capabilities of faculty, research staff, and graduate students. Second, instilling a research culture and research vocation among faculty and graduate students. Third, upgrading physical resources and research infrastructure. Fourth, building up, retraining, and retaining a sustainable stream of a new generation of researchers. Next, increasing research productivity and raising research quality and impact. Next, we have having the institutionalized research code of ethics that maintains the integrity, openness, and transparency of the research process and safeguards intellectual property. And lastly, in the case of extension or applied research, establishing structured partnerships with community, business, and industry stakeholders in order to integrate formal research and innovation efforts with informal grassroots knowledge and innovation. As the title of this document suggests, the assistance offered by CHED either through grants in aid programs, institutional grants, scholarships and financial assistance and technical coaching and mentorship all lead towards the long-term vision of ensuring that research becomes and remains a gateway of securing an equitable, relevant, and progressive higher education. While we at the Commission act on our mandates at the policy program and governance perspectives, we also solicit your boundless support to help actualize and realize these goals. Without your support to ensure that your individual and collaborative research undertakings also contribute to equitable and relevant societal advancement, we would not be able to achieve our long-term goals. You are the ones who make this dream possible. And it, is, and it is through your unparalleled passion for research that we can realize the betterment of Central Bicol State University of Agriculture and the entire nation. I look forward to the positive and meaningful outputs of this initiative, and I look forward to hearing the results of the research made by our set of speakers. I would also like to give an early congratulations to Central Bicol State University of Agriculture, headed by President Albert Naperi, as this sets a precedent to all other universities to likewise do the same for research advancement. Thank you, and magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Brilliant, Master Jeff. Sir, thank you very much for emphasizing benefits of stainless bees and supporting research endeavors of faculty members. We are sincerely grateful for your presence and continued support to CBSCA. We will definitely ensure equitable, relevant, and progressive higher education. Let us now proceed to the rationale of the international webinar. So to give us the, uh, the rationale, please welcome the Pacific Coordinator of Safe Network, Dr. Ravindra C. Joshi. Good afternoon. Uh, first of all, thanks uh, uh, to Commissioner Dr. Uh, Aldrin Darilak and the President uh, Dr. Alberto Napier for uh, giving a very uh, holistic uh, message and a welcome address. Uh, I have a very, uh, the, my job is going to be very simple in terms of explaining uh, the rationale, which was already well 
uh, narrated by the commissioner. Uh, however, uh, to from the SAFE network, we would like to welcome our, all the participants that are joining from different time zones. Today we have uh, participants from all over the world and uh, so I like to greet them good morning, good afternoon and good evening. Today's webinar is the first of the many succeeding webinars that will be organized with the support of the SAFE network to further strengthen networking and knowledge sharing on stingless bees research for development, training, and international collaboration. Please allow me to briefly mention about the SAFE network because some of us may not know the meaning of what is why it's called SAFE network. The establishment of the networking on sustainable, that is S, that is sustainable, agriculture, that is A, and food and energy, that is F and E, for university and college educators, researchers, and activists in Asia Pacific region is known as the SAFE Network. SAFE Network was established on the 12th of May, 2013 in Andalus University in Padang, Indonesia with Dr. Novisar Nasir as the overall global coordinator of the SAFE Network. Uh, the importance of this uh, international webinar is uh, on stingless bees. We all know stingless bees are closely related to the honeybees, bumblebees, and orchard bees. All of us know that the bees in general, on the whole, are of great service to the mankind. Firstly, they carry out important role in pollination of flowering plants, resulting in high quality and high quantity yields of fruits and seeds. The stingless bees plays, play a key role in pollinating native flora in tropical and subtropical areas around the world and also used to pollinate greenhouse plants or crops in both temperate and tropical regions. Some species of stingless bees pollinate more efficiently than the stinging bee. We all know more about the stinging bees, but very less about the stingless bees. And probably they pollinate better because of their small size and because of their large species diversity. The second important role that stingless bees are, is, are important to the mankind in production of hive products. These are honey, propolis, pollen bee wax, and et cetera. These high, product, high products have unique medicinal and can be of great benefit to health promotion and usually valued more highly. Thus they potential, and they, they, these uh, bees, they contribute to 15 of the 17 United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, and a minimum of 30 SDG targets. And their role on family food and nutrition security, including livelihood and income, biodiversity, preservation of the environment is crucial, especially in the new normal that is COVID-19. Today, our key speakers are from two state universities in the Philippines, the Central Bicol State University of Agriculture, which is the co-host, and from the Pampanga State Agriculture University. And these two universities in the Philippines, aside from the other universities, are doing great work on stingless bees. And we have two universities in Indonesia today, the presenters, from one from the Padjan University, and the second is Varmadeva University in Indonesia, and one uh, key note speaker from Malaysia, from University of Mal Malaysia, uh, Taraguano, uh, UT, uh, UMT, to share their experience on stingless bees and the bee products. So today's uh, webinar is uh, the first one, and in the future, we will be inviting uh, other speakers from 
Philippines as well as from other universities, both in the Philippines as well as in, in the other countries around the world. And also from other international organizations in the, in the next webinar. So thank you and enjoy the webinar. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Dr. Joshi, for giving us a wonderful rationale and giving us more insights on Safe Network. So Dr. Joshi is also one of our, the prime movers of this event. Thank you very much, sir, for all your efforts. At this juncture, ladies and men, we will now start with the first lecture. But first, may I give you a brief introduction of our resource speaker. She is currently the Vice President for Research and Innovation and one of the Distinguished Professor Six of Central People State University of Agriculture, San Jose, Pili Camarines World, Philippines. She is one of the pillars of stainless steel research in the university, has presented in several avenues and has received several awards locally, nationally, regionally, and internationally. A prolific researcher and administrator, a mother of two, and a beloved wife, ladies and men, to talk on CBSUA experience, Philippine stingless bees. Please welcome Dr. Maria Dulce J. Mustalos. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Dr. Novisar, our president, uh, Albert Ngaperi, uh, Commissioner Darilag, uh, of course, Joshi, Ravindra Joshi and um, my co-presenters in this first webinar on Stainless B. Uh, I am very proud to present to you what we have done at CBSUA for the last two decades working on Stainless B. Okay, so I am going to share with you our experiences on the Philippine Stainless B uh, as, as uh, initiated also by our university. Okay, so the, the uh, CBSUA is a higher education institution dedicated to conduct research, extension, and production in agriculture. Actually, we have four campuses, which has a diverse program uh, in agriculture, fisheries, and allied sciences. And we have faculty members who are researchers, extensionists, and entrepreneurs. We develop technologies and them disseminated in the region to uplift and alleviate the poverty of our clients. This in line the vision and mission of the academic institution, specifically the higher education students in the academy, uh, together with their parents who are mostly farmers and fisher folks, who are empowered in agribusiness as agribusiness entrepreneurs, food, uh, producing safe and nutritious food. The partnership of the academy is deemed necessary to conduct technology-driven researches, provide the farmers learning environment through a capacity enhancement on entrepreneurial and marketing skills and developing downstream products, increase the total income from quality meat market demand and improve application of technologies with upgraded modern and packaging, packaging and practicing. So one of the technologies related to the university is meliponiculture, we call this the stingless bee technology, which is the mandate of the Regional Apiculture Center. How did this start? Okay, so in 1999, from 1999 to 2006, we have been involved with beekeeping groups, and one of which is the bee net. And I think Dr. Servancia is listening, is a member, is a guest in this uh, 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 seminar, and also BAPI where it is actually based at Binsu. So during this time, we did initial researches and conducted these researches lead to discover the stingless bee as a potential species. In 2007 to 2018, CBSJ was endorsed by the Regional Development Council as the Regional Apiculture Center, the first satellite center of the NARD through the, through the past presidents, Dr. Wilfredo Olano and Dr. Marito Bernales of CBSUA. Through this, we continued researches, uh, activities, are the activities in our region. So in 2019, 2019 uh, our, uh, our president, Dr. Alberto Enapiri, 
the seventh CBSU president declared Stingless B technology as our flagship program. And through this, we continue promoting commercialization of the Stingless B technology. So if you uh, look at the slide, we have research has conducted from 1995 to uh, 2006. And during this time, we created the Regional Apiculture Center. Okay. So initial works on stingless bees. So this, is, this was discovered as early as 1999. And this was done by my partners, Dr. Ruiz and Mr. Palconite, who is a farmer from Ginubatan Albay. So expiratory research is leading to the packaging, the culture of stingless bees. We started promoting the cocoa shell technology. And this was presented the fourth international conference of the AAA in 2004 and in the Batik Conference in 2005. Of course, as the Regional Apiculture Center, we were mandated to focus on stingless bee, R&B, promotion dissemination in the year 2007. For instruction, we included beekeeping as a subject, part of the industrial entomology for the BSA program, specifically for BSA major entomology. We also had an enterprise wherein our students were able to conduct activities, entrepreneurial activities in the uh, university. And of course, this was a venue for our practicum of most BSA entom, plant pathology, BSA economics and extension majors, as well as the BSA agroecotourism and the BSA agroeconomics. So more or less we've accommodated in the center 100 practicum students and we assisted student researchers from 1995 to 2016 at a count of 76 researches and to, from 2017 to 2020, 2020, 31 researches. Okay, what are the research which we conducted? So one, we focused on bee biology and diversity. Then we also did cultural management practices of stingless bees. Then processing utilization of bee and bee byproducts. Now we also did marketing of bee and bee byproducts. So talking about supply and demand analysis and consumer preferences. We did conservation and ecosystem management. And of course, the most important contribution of stingless bee is bees in crop pollination. So we identified pollen sources of different of stingless bee in different provinces and ecosystems, as well as determine the bloom pattern behavior. So if you uh, hear some accomplishments made by the university, at least we have conducted 107 researches. We got 42 awards for our researches and we got 16 research results published in journals. Okay? For extension, we conducted trainings and short courses. So we do quarterly trainings in different provinces. We offer summer courses on beekeeping. And the next activity is Meliponari and Militarism Establishment. So one of the very significant things we did was we assisted the former PAC, or we call this the uh, PAC or the Provincial Agriculture <laughs> Office to have their own Meliponari. We evaluated and monitor existing Meliponaris in the Bicol region. And third, we had exhibits and conferences participated on and uh, hosted conferences and participated in conferences. Okay. So these are some activities we had. We had 94 trainings, as, uh, including even the training for the Kabihog tribes. We had three national conferences hosted. We had eight exhibits uh, uh, participated during this period. Okay. Likewise, we presented our results in uh, different fora and 29 of which, based on my records, we helped 35 meliponaries and meliturism sites. And then we prepared three manuals and 16 copyrights, copyrighted brochures for the uh, IEC materials. Now let's go to the meliponaries which we assisted. Uh, we have assisted farms in Lagunoy, in Candon City, in Naga City, a school, we call them the NVAC farm. We also have assisted the farmers of Ternani and Basie, Samar. Another farmer from Pilipanina farm at Sampalo Pusal, also in Catanduanes. 
we also assisted them. Then we have a farm in Libon Albay, in Camarinesur, in Sorsogon. We also have one in again Naga City in uh, Tacloban. Okay, Tacloban. We have uh, actually helped people in Tacloban. Then for the militarism, we also have, uh, of course, we have the Balay Boy Sa Uma, this, which was assisted by our partner, the, uh, the Palculitin family. Then we have the Grouse Bee Farm, the AFB Veal Bee Farm, the Equibis and New Farm, the Kabihog Tribe, and the Farm Bill in Naga City. We have the Jubuken Farm in Kamalik Albay, the Hot Spring Bee Farm in Naga City, the MPB Bee Farm in Pamplona, Henry Phelps Bee Farm in Ligao, Sonrisa Farm in Magarao, the Hagahag Farm in Goa, just to name a few. Okay? So we have brochures prepared for the, for the outputs of our researches. One was published in Academia through the, through the help of Abu Hassan Halil and other brochures. And also we had the, uh, pay, my, the paper which I presented uh, had, uh, was funded by uh, Shirka was uh, also published in Shirka as a discussion paper. So about the products, we have different products which we developed in the university. And as our president uh, said a while ago, we were able to distribute this during the uh, height of the pandemic to our frontliners and some uh, medical institutions in the province. For the, as a satellite center, we created or we established provincial centers. Actually, we have three main provincial centers now, one from uh, Sorsogon, then we have uh, one from Catanduanes and Albay, and we are planning to create more with the other souks in the province. And of course, we are going to create municipal centers also. Now, linkages, we had uh, a lot of linkages, and to get, uh, specifically the state colleges and universities in the country. So we have the Sorsogon State College created in 2008, Katanduan State College University in 2011, and the Provincial Agriculture Office in 2019. So here's the Tagayan State University, which are a partner, our partner in the North, Southern Luzon State University, and of course, let us not forget my friend Norman in Pampanga State Agriculture University. For production, we are now into colony production. The university has now a project wherein we are producing colonies which will be available to all interested uh, beekeepers uh, planning to set up their own meliponary. We are producing honey pollen, propolis, and beeswax. I think the royal jelly is still under study. Then we are doing also utilization of these byproducts. Okay? So I have mentioned about the IC, IAC materials we have produced. And actually, we are into producing the book on stingless bee in the near future. Then we have the hives and beekeeping paraphernalia and the forage establishment as part of our assistance be, uh, in production being done in the university. So these are some of the different hives which uh, the bee colonists are using and other, other uh, beekeepers in the country is using. So this is the... Uh, original coco shell technology which we had presented in the AAA, but now we have innovated different boxes which has been tested for its adaptability. Okay. Now for the marketing, again we are marketing colonies to different parts of the country. We are marketing bee products and other value-adding products which is now produced in the university. Just an example, this is the market flow of where our products are going into, and even our colonies are actually going into. Now, for more information of what we have done, the universe has been done, please refer to the articles from the Academia, that is the Beekeeping Initiative of CBS and Stingless Bees in the Philippines, uh, the book published by uh, Shirka on Community Based Approach to Sustainable Stingless Beekeeping in Source of Philippines, and uh, the paper published in the Philippine Entomologist, the performance of stainless bees in different hives under different ecosystems. Then also, please uh, contact or see our YouTube and FB page of CBSUA for trainings which we have conducted. Now, I would like to especially 
offer this facility, dedicated facilitation to my co-workers on stainless steel research and extension in the Bicol region who have already joined our creator. Prof. Raul Luis, our co-entomologist, Mang Upoy, or we call them Chu Upoy, Ralph Makunitin, and of course, Reverend Fadimanon Espejo, who started our uh, uh, lectures on stewardship whenever we have trainings. So this is the sharing I'm going, uh, I am presenting to you, and God bless you and peace be with you, everyone. Thank you for listening. We call it just mabalos. Just mabalos, meaning thank you from the call. Yes, just mabalos, Dr. Mosales, peace be with you too. Thank you very much, Dr. Maria Dulce Mosales of CBSCA. She is one of the prime movers of this event. Thank you very much, ma'am, for all your efforts, along with your very supportive and active staff. CBSUA has really done so much in integrating and promoting CBSUA in instruction, research, extension, and production throughout the years. Thus, spreading the love of stainless steel around the nation and hopefully around the world. Our next resource speaker is also a professor six and currently the director of Alternative Low Input Agriculture System. Alias RDE Center at Pampanga State Agricultural University, Magalang Pampanga, Philippines. He is also the director of the National Organic Agriculture Board and the secretary of the Philippine Association Agriculturist Central Luzon and managing consultant of N.D. Jesus Agricultural Consultancy Services at San Agustin, Magalang, Pampanga. He has also held several administrative positions, conducted, published, and presented several research and extension activities on stainless and honeybees. He has also received several awards and recognitions, numbered in several organizations, and attended several beekeeping trainings in uh, nationally and internationally. Ladies and men, to talk on PSAU experience promotion of beekeeping and bee product and byproduct and development, please welcome Dr. Norman G. De Jesus. You see my slide? Yes, sir. Yes, good afternoon. good afternoon, one and all. Before I will proceed with my presentation, I'd like to express my sincere respect to Dr. Nabizir Nasir, the Safe International Network Global Overall Coordinator, to the Honorable Chair Commissioner, Dr. Aldrin Darilag, President of of CBSUA, my fellow presenters, Friends of Safe International Network, ladies and gentlemen. PSAU or the Pampanga State Agricultural University is nestled at the foot of the majestic Mount Arayat in forest, most of which is planted to fruit trees, organic coffee, orchard, among many other important crops. The team composed of different uh, disciplines. The, uh, for the background, uh, uh, practically beekeeping doesn't require vast lands to start engaging to it. It rather complements the efforts of the Department of uh, Environment and Natural Resources with pollination services bees um, due to forest vegetation. Furthermore, the promotion of organic agriculture in the country is likewise receiving reciprocation in this regard, as well as fruit orchard in the same way. The general objective of this uh, project is to promote various communities in the vicinity of Mount Arayat and nearby municipalities of Pampanga. The specific objectives are as follows. Uh, to scale the apiary of PSA for training, research, and extension purposes, 
upscale the apiary of PSA for uh, to conduct relevant uh, research exercises, should I say, of indigenous beekeeping practices, pollination, foraging, behavior, and economics, as well as to extend beekeeping technologies to farmers through training. The PSA apiary, which consists only beforehand of 10 colonies of Apis mellifera was amplified with another 15 starter colonies and 15 stingless bees. Hives associated equipment were fabricated and some were purchased. The initial harvest of about 150 kilograms of honey were made into wine and into food and non-food products well. Uh, beeswax and the propolis are important byproducts of the beekeeping project as well. Beeswax was used for the production of skin treating uh, products as well as in preparing, uh, preparing uh, mosquito repellent uh, uh, candles. Propolis, on the other hand, was utilized in analysis for its possible health uh, uh, benefits. We did conduct also relevant researches, uh, and these are the uh, some of the uh, sample study that we uh, did conduct uh, in the project. Uh, for the methodology, we made use of the following species of bees, such as Apis millipera and stingless, for sweet tamarind trees, stingless for cashew and cherry tomatoes, and Apis millipera for cucumber and uh, squash. We did a simple uh, um, uh, treatment with net with bees, with net without bees, as well as open field to measure the contribution of the honeybees in pollinating different products. We provided the bees with supplemental feeding material like ripe mangoes and uh, water especially showed during the bloom of uh, uh, mangoes. This is how we did it to measure the contribution of the mellifera as well as the uh, stingless uh, bees. For the contribution of honeybees to productivity of three-year-old sweet tamarind, uh, results show significant differences on the number of sweet tamarind fruits which were produced at different conditions such as treatment to tamarind treats with net and with honeybees obtained the highest mean. This is followed by treatment three, which is tamarind trees in open field. And the least is tam treatment three, which was tamarind with net and with no bees at the lowest mean. This uh, indicates that the presence of honeybees increase the uh, sweet tamarind uh, uh, production. The contribution of the honeybees is apparently favorable to the yield performance of sweet tamarind of six, year, six years old uh, trees. With the uh, um, recording of the continuous uh, uh, observation of its uh, fruit yield. Stingless bees influence higher fruit set on cashew as you can see. And um, similarly, fruit set of squash was favorably influenced by uh, the presence of uh, bees relative to computed yield that was as, as well as the uh, present fruit set of the uh, uh, squash. Also in the case of cucumber, uh, in view of the length of the fruits as well as the weight of the, uh, the fruits, uh, uh, and then for uh, cherry tomatoes, significant differences on the number of fruits, length of fruits, and width of the fruits of cherry tomatoes raised in different conditions, such as treatment one and treatment three, shows no significant difference on the size of cherry tomato, while treatment two showed significant difference with treatment one and uh, three. This indicates that. Honeybee could attract or affect favorably the fruit size of cherry uh, uh, tomatoes.
In summary, uh, about 42% fruit set to sweet tamarine, 45% to cucumber, 60% on the squash. And for the documentation of beekeeping practices and indigenous knowledge and bee products utilization in this part of the country in Region 3, um, uh, most of the beekeepers of Region 3 are located in Gabaldon de Baisiha, Abukay, uh, Bataan, as well as in Bulacan. Uh, beekeeping farmers are members of Beekeepers Association in Central Luzon chapter. The uh, type of race that they are raising mostly are Apis Midifera and Stingless. Uh, the uh, uh, colonies, uh, uh, they own ranges from four to 48 uh, colonies. The farm size for beekeeping ranges from 1,000 to 5,000 square meters. Beekeepers observe proper hive placement density and management. The practice of the three provinces are comparable to the operation and management of an ideal bee farm where our critical requirements are considered given the needs of this for beeswax, nectar, water, and other sources of pollen. The comparable practices of the beekeepers in the region may be attributed to their membership in beekeepers association wherein they are motivated to adopt the practices set by the uh, association. Their training uh, needs include provision of training on the global trends in beekeeping, quality race of bees, and the packaging um, uh, technology. And the main products uh, of the beekeepers include honey, bee pollen, beeswax, and um, uh, binum. For the inventor of bee plants surrounding Mount Arayat in the in Pampanga area, Eight forest trees, 12 beach balls, 5 field crops, 13 fruit trees, 6 ornamental plants, and 4 wild plants have so far been identified and are found within PSA of Pampanga Street Agricultural University surroundings and vicinity of Mount Arayat. Um, this varied uh, in their flowering time, which make them good sources of nectar and pollen all year round for the bees. There are plants producing either nectar or pollen, and there are also that uh, which possess both nectar and pollen. The honeybees like to forage on nara, acacia, palm trees, and flowering ornamentals and fruit trees. Host plants for bees surrounding Mount Arayat are almost the same host plants for bees in the Caldera, as per the uh, report that is in another region. Their foraging habit usually lasts from between uh, 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. and 4 a.m. to 6 uh, p.m. In the, in the afternoon. There are common trees found in Mount Riot, include Nara, Mahogany, Acacia, Kakawate, Panaba, Bulabe, Eucalyptus, and Ipil Ipil. These trees are visited by the bees, but the most frequently visited are Acacia and Banaba. These trees were prepared because bees need pollen and nectar for their reproduction and growth, which uh, these three species uh, uh, provide. On the contribution of the Padme as pollinators to select the tropical fruit trees and organic vegetable crops, cucumber, corn, pechay, mustard, patola, horseradish, squash, and bitter guard were visited by the bees at different months of the year, but frequently visited bees the bulwark cucumber, patola, and corn. The table indicates that bees visited most of the bees the for pollen and uh, uh, nectar. And uh, for the other fruits uh, visited by trees are indicated also in the uh, table. We also extend the beekeeping technologies to farmers through uh, uh, training. There were about uh, 
500 uh, individuals who were given uh, orientation and hands-on training about various products that can be developed from honey as well as on be basic beekeeping practices. Hands-on activities were conducted among coffee and fruit orchard owners and farmers as well as organic agriculture enthusiasts, uh, non-government organization, local government units, educators, students, um, as well as worth noting, uh, the uh, video production of Cynthia Tison of Going Green, an agri-TV show uh, aired at PEP TV Channel 11, said video showcases the various products developed from beeswax and honey Another video was taken by CLTV 36, a local TV station, covering highlights on the bee management and product uh, uh, development. These are extension activities sharing the technology to the community to encourage practice organic uh, agriculture or, and sustainable agriculture to improve their crop uh, production system and improving farm uh, uh, Dr. Zabala discusses the various honey based products to one of our visitors, actually one of the uh, our, one of our mentors and one of the uh, queens of beekeeping in the Philippines, Dr. Cleo Paz Cervantia, uh, as well as uh, uh, showing in the slide the wellness products from honey and honey byproducts develop are the following honey moisturizing soap, lotus enriched with lo honey soap, tamarind soap with honey, lotus beeswax ointment, tamarind beeswax ointment, honey lip balm, rejuvenating skin nourishing, lotus honey body uh, scrub, and tamarind shower gel with uh, honey. Also, honey wine or mead is an alcohol or alcoholic beverage that is produced by fermenting a solution of honey, water, sugar, and yeast. Honey wine is also called uh, drinkable honey, wedding wine, or drink of love. Honey wine has a good level of uh, antioxidants from uh, uh, the honey. Of course, there are some setbacks. The apiary devastated by typhoons. It, it is advisable to place this, the uh, apiary in a more secure place with sturdy rafts so that they will not uh, fall or drown during uh, inclement weather, such as typhoon and uh, the likes. Poisoning is also a problem. This can fly as far as five kilometer radius so that it is important that proper coordination among local farmers is necessary, especially so if they plan to spray chemicals, the in charge of the apiary should be notified one to two days at least ahead to secure uh, the bees. It is also uh, necessary to uh, inspect uh, the apiary every so often to ensure the colonies are healthy. To partner or cooperate to prestigious institutions like CBSUA or uh, Camarines uh, Central Beacon State University of Agriculture who are into the same field and are expert in beekeeping is an important consideration for a successful beekeeping business or engagement. And then continued promotion of organic agriculture is uh, uh, very important to ensure healthy environment and healthy and happy uh, for the bees. I think that's all for, uh, for my uh, happy. Thank you very much for listening. Another outstanding presentation. Sorry, sir. Thank you so much, Dr. Norman G. DeJesus of Pampanga State University, Agricultural University. PSAU has also gone to great lengths 
in really improving the quality of fruits and vegetables through and finding effective means to education, please feel free to post your questions in the chat box. And we will read them all in the open forum later. Thanks for our speaker, the Regional Apiculture Center Director of Thanks. Central Legal State University of Agriculture, Pili Kamarinisor, Philippines. She is very passionate about stimulus fees and had initiated and talked on several trainings and workshops, formed partnerships or linkages on stimulus fees. She has also conducted, presented, and published several papers throughout the years. A passionate beekeeper, researcher, extensionist, director, a wife, a mother, and a grandmother to talk on community-based enterprise on Maliponi culture and bee products. Please welcome Professor Lilia C. Pashon. We apologize for uh, some technical difficulties. Currently, we are um, coordinating with the host. Good, mo good afternoon, everyone. Um, Lilia Pasol here from the Central Bicol State University of Agriculture from the regional, as the director of the Regional Apiculture Center. Um, let me share to you our uh, experiences on, on community-based enterprise on Meliponi culture. CBSUA is an institution dedicated to perform higher education, research, and agriculture, especially on stainless beads. As part of CBSUA's goal to engage and empower communities, the university commits to extend the technologies generated through years of intensive research. Regional Apiculture Center has a sole mandate from the National Apiculture Research Training and Development Institute to promote stainless beekeeping technology, also referred as Meliponi culture. Community beekeeping is one of the fulfillment of the CBSUA's mission to lead innovations and to build resilient and sustainable communities. The Meliponi culture initiatives of the university has paved the way to so many opportunities, including the partnership 
between Dr. Maria Dulce James Tolles with the Southeast Asian Regional Center for Graduate Studies and Research in Agriculture, known as SHERCA. This part, the partnership between SHERCA and Dr. Mustoles has led to the publication of this book, which is the community-based approach to sustainable stingless beekeeping in Sorsogon, Philippines. The book is all about the, res the, the book is all about her research that was conducted in Sorsogon in order to document the ethnological and meliponicultural practices, also to determine the diversity and abundance of stingless bee population in selected sites, facilitate the transfer of knowledge, as well as meliponary establishment to community level, and to develop the policy on conserving wild population of stingless bees. Because as of this time, there is a rampant uh, harvesting of feral colony, which is not regulated by our local uh, authorities. Capacity enhancement on beekeeping and ecologically sound hunting methods were given to the beneficiaries. The result of the research will lead to the upliftment of beekeeping as an alternative livelihood and to conservation measures of the hunting practices. Stainless bee technology had been extended to the community through trainings and by providing bee colonies CBSUA have also given support to beekeepers in marketing and promoting bee products. Among the communities that has been assisted by the beekeeping technology are as follows. The group of farmers, entrepreneurs, local and provincial government employees of Camarini Sur. The group of senior citizens, uh, farmer in collaboration with the pro province of Veterinary Office, Department of Agriculture, uh, Region 5, Pili Camarini Sur. The farmers and the local officials of the province of Catanduanes, headed by Congressman Cesar V. Sarmiento. The Fisher Fox and Vegetable Farmers, Barangay Guidolog, Prito Diaz, or Sogon. The Organic Farmers, Biliran Leite. Members of the Municipal and Agricultural Fishery Council, MAPSI and employees of Municipal Agriculture Office uh, of Aurora Masbate. The non-teaching employees of the CBSUA as uh, our president is strongly uh, mandated us to have engagement on beekeeping because this is our flagship program. Women's group of Libon Albay, and just yesterday that we have trained women's of Barangay uh, San Jose, Sitio Kabukludan, Pili Camarini Sur. Albay Bounty Farm Village of Kamalig Albay has been um, helped by our university to develop their uh, Mel Melipot tourism site. Community of hunters and beekeepers in Buluson and Kasiguran, Sorsogon. This is the most uh, uh, help that we have extended as so far is the victims of the super typhoon Yolanda in summer and Tacloban. We are so honored as well to extend the beekeeping uh, beekeeping um, skills to our members of Kabihog tribe from Kapalonga and Labo Camarines Norte. As well, also the members of the Philippine Army, the Engineering Construction Battalion, Campuni Martiliana, Pili Camarines Sur, has been, and selected civilians in their community has been also trained uh, of the beekeeping of BKP. Organic farmers of Camarini were trained in partnership with Agricultural Training Institute. Also, the members of the Bao Organic Planters and Processor Associations and the member of Camarini Sur Daily Zone Multi Purpose Cooperative and Beekeeper Association of Camarini Sur. 
The initiatives on the community-based beekeeping continues through time as this endeavor had been granted a fund by the DAASF to conduct a research project entitled a community-based enterprise on meliponi and bee product from July 2020 until June 2022. The project aims to enhance the production of stingless bees and to upgrade the skills of beekeepers in the Bicol region, provide business support through the development of commercial products from bee colonies, honey, pollen, and propolis, and also to provide an additional source of livelihood to the Bicolano beekeepers. We also have this uh, objective to develop uh, Development and processing of bee, by pro bee products and byproducts were one of among uh, targeted goals of the project. These are some of the pictures. Uh, I can show you the honey, pollen, and propolis as the product, bee products. These are the bee products that we have developed. We have the tincture for external and in internal and external use cream, lip balm, and soap, and the beeswax. Moreover, I would like to, to uh, give additional information that uh, as far as TV guestings from the local uh, networks that we have here in Camarini Sur, we are also invited to partake our beekeeping endeavors. Uh, we have been featured by Saksarian and uh, the late Saksarian on the bulletin and uh, uh, and Mr. Jerry Hieronimo, Hieronimo of Ating Alamin. We have also produced videos for us, our training materials. Thank you and peace be with you and happy holidays. Yes, this be with you and happy church. She is also one of the prime movers of this event and one of the pillars of Stingless Bee and CBSCA. Thank you very much, Mama Dil, for, for all your efforts. So Stingless Bee being the flagship program of Central Bicol State University of Agriculture, the, uh, the Regional Agriculture Center has been actively extending beekeeping skills and capacities capabilities through research, extension, and production endeavors to different agencies throughout the Bicol region. So our next speaker is an associate professor at University Malaysia Trenganu. She, uh, her expertise is in cell signaling and pharmaceutical biotechnology of several natural products such as bee, bee products, honeybee, uh, bee bread and olives, marine organisms and herbs. Among the prominent findings are methods in identifying authenticity and quality status of honey samples, medicinal effects of natural honey, harmful effects of fake honey, and medical applications of marine organisms. She has also secured several grants and supervised undergraduate and postgraduate students. She has also received several awards locally and internationally. She is also an emerging academic leader at the national level, including the, the head of the committee to develop a 10-year strategic plan for stainless beekeeping industry. And she has networking and research collaboration in France, Philippines, South Africa, USA, Malaysia and Malaysia. She is also a member of the professional organizations in the United Kingdom and Malaysia. A versatile, holistic, dynamic, and passionate lecturer with a vision to help society through her research and share to share her insights on Maliponi culture, a new wealth creation from Malaysian perspective. Please welcome Dr. Juan Eriani. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, it is very um, uh, grateful to me to be a part of this uh, uh, webinar. Uh, I would like to thank you to the organizer, Safe Network and CBSUA for inviting me to be a part of the, to be one of the speakers. Um, so, assalamualaikum, good morning, good afternoon and good uh, evening. 
So I would like to share uh, what we have done, what we're going to do related to money culture, especially from Malaysia perspective. Right, so I believe the chairperson already uh, explained about uh, myself, but I'm, I think I'm the youngest uh, speaker here because I just involved in the uh, BKP and Monopony culture since 2010. And, but I'm truly uh, happy to share that um, um, I was appointed as um, uh, head of a committee, uh, but I'm going to have another committee later on after this related to monoculture. Uh, industry in Malaysia. I'm also involved in the developing and producing the Malaysian standard um, regarding the stingless bee honey. We call them as MS 2683 in 2017. So um, I'm happy to share that I'm um, a lecturer from University of Malaysia Terengganu. You can see this um, map of Malaysia here that uh, we are here at, at at the east coast of Peninsula Malaysia. Then here is our university. And we are lucky enough because we are uh, focusing on the uh, marine environment, uh, sustainable, uh, sustainable environment, food security, uh, in terms of our teaching, also our research. And we also have uh, so many research um, uh, islands, uh, research, uh, research institutions that uh, we are uh, very focusing on doing many research related to the food security and also sustainable, sustainable environment. All right, so um, I would like to share my briefly about our beekeeping and monopon culture in Malaysia. Um, actually, we, uh, we have started in 1980, um, where we have a department of agriculture that's lead to modern, modern beekeeping. We, at this moment, uh, at, at the time, actually, we use Apis mellifera, okay, we imported from overseas to develop a beekeeping, uh, modern beekeeping in Malaysia. And then also, we also established National Apiary Center in Johor, Malaysia in 1988. And unfortunately, uh, we had a problem of, um, might infection during the time that almost um, destroy, kill our bees during the time. And because of the problem, uh, our government agency looking for alternative um, approach, how to overcome this kind of problem. In 2008, in 2008, we have a research institution called Murti. They have started to study stingless bee, our local stingless bee, to overcome the uh, beekeeping uh, problems. And in 2014 and 16, we started to launch the beekeeping, uh, especially monopony culture practice during our uh, big event during the time called as Maha. And because, because we can see the future of this product, stingless bee product, including honey, propolis, and bee pride. So we are looking for more activities, more initiatives, how to make sure this stingless bee product, especially honey, can be marketed at the international level. So we have developed and produced our national um, standard document called as MS2683 in 2017. And then uh, currently uh, um, we are looking, we are uh, working to improve the standard to get um, most of the other issues related, uh, for example, climate change and, 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 and also other things. And I'm, I'm actually I'm a part of this uh, committee as a deputy chairman for the um, Malaysian uh, standard. And last year, we just managed to launch our 10-year 10 10 year strategic plan related to stingless beekeeping industry in Malaysia. Hopefully we can uh, do more activity, can focus more how to uh, utilize uh, this uh, molybond culture, especially in Malaysia, to give a new uh, wealth, a new economic income to our uh, country. 
So I'm truly honored to introduce my Sifu, my mentors here. So actually some of you here already know some of them. For example, like Professor Emeritus, Dr. Mahdi Madan. He uh, actually he's, a, he's the B expert in Malaysia, considered as a pioneer in Malaysia, but now he's uh, retired. And but still, we still have a, a good contact. And we also have Mr. Zabamian. Actually, this uh, he involved. Actually, he introduced the modern beekeeping in Malaysia. In, uh, I'm lucky enough to have Professor Dr. Kamaruddin Muhammad Yusuf. He is involved in honey analysis, how to uh, identify purity or authenticity status of the honey in our market and consider as finer in his uh, field. I'm also, we also have Professor Dr. Siti Amra. Uh, he's a, uh, she, she's a medical doctor and yeah, uh, he used a lot of uh, pea uh, products and also stingless bee products. Um, as, as, for example, in diabetic treatment and, 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 also, and also other uh, modern diseases, other chronic diseases. And we also have a Professor Dr. Muhammad Mansur Ismail. Uh, he's a major, his, his expertise in honey and beekeeping economics. And me, myself, uh, can consider involved in research and de development in bee products, beekeeping and monopony culture. And once we talk about monopony culture itself, uh, we are truly uh, happy to have that these all people uh, involved um, consistently to make sure this uh, monopony culture can be developed in Malaysia. For example, we have uh, Dr. Muhammad Norawi, uh, actually, he uh, he was a um, uh, deputy director in Malti. But actually, he introduced stingless bee rearing uh, in Malaysia uh, together with Mr. Zakaria from the Department of Agriculture Malaysia. And we are lucky enough to have Mr. Abu Hassan Jalil that Dr. Maria just mentioned just now. Yes, he also uh, he also is one of my mentors in, in this monoculture culture. Uh, he, he involved in academic clinical Malaysia. And beside of the researcher, beside of the uh, government agency, and we also have NGOs here. NGOs, we have uh, this Mr. Abdullah and also Mr. Hazul Nizam. They are um, actually the entrepreneurs also considered as a beekeepers. Uh, they have a um, conf confederation. They have all the uh, society related to stingless bee in Malaysia under one umbrella. So they are involved actively to make sure this beekeeping uh, can be developed properly in Malaysia. And I would like to share my research as well. Um, initially, I was started with very fundamental study, okay, because my background uh, more to the pharmaceutical biotech and considered as a biomedical study. And I, I, I used um, several types of honey from bee species like bee, uh, Apis dorsata, Apis mellifera, and Apis serrana. Uh, we use this honey to treat, uh, to treat on the uh, breast cancer and also other uh, a few uh, cancer cell lines including liver cancer, colon cancer. And um, during the time I went to the jungle, I went to the farm, we collected the honey directly from the hive to make, to make sure we can control the quality of the honey. And we, are, we were so lucky that we found that honey can uh, kill the cancer cells and at the same time can induce normal cells to be grown properly. And similar happened to the obesity study. We used this honey, including colloidal honey, stingless uh, bee honey, uh, to, to treat obesity. Uh, we received, we found very interesting result that um, all the honey actually can reduce the excess weight gain. And um, however, we are wondering uh, why our results um, were, were totally different compared to the other groups, to the other studies. And we, tr we try to dig uh, deeper 
to understand the differences. Then we found actually there are uh, purity or authenticity status, uh, honey um, problems in this uh, in this uh, field actually occur uh, during the time um, because um, from our group we collected the honey uh, directly from the heart. We truly control the quality of the honey, but the other groups they just bought, um, brought the honey from the market and they are not sure about the purity status, how sh how how authentic the honey and so on. So from because of the problem, um, trying to understand uh, why there are a lot of um, fake honey in the market that we found actually there were a shortage of the honey supply in the market. So that's lead to the more of the fake honey uh, production during the time. And based on a report by my mentor, Prof Kamaruddin, in, in 2006, he found that almost 80% of the honey in the market was fake honey. Then, because of the problem, starting from a very fundamental study, then I, I started to involve with other stakeholders, stakeholders in this uh, monopoly culture, uh, involved with the beekeepers directly, uh, involved with the government agency, including Department of Agriculture, uh, uh, Ministry of Agriculture, Ministry of Health, um, also Department of Standard, NGOs, including Academic Clinic Malaysia, GP UKM, Kulakat, Industry, Kalulu, My Ikrok, Pamaniaga, Umaira, medias, communities, consumers, and other universities locally and internationally to make sure we can supply pure honey to the market, to the consumers. And we, then um, I was realized there's something, uh, for, there's a, there were problem related to our policy. So because of the problem, I used our result, our research uh, findings uh, to, to propose a specific policy related to the monopoly culture. Since then, I involved with the policy making related to the uh, beekeeping of the monopoly culture to make sure we can supply pure honey to our uh, consumers. And I can show here that we I uh, I involved with several meetings with many agencies. I went to the jungle. I went to the farm. We collected honey during the night time. Uh, we get um, shared session to the community, to the beekeepers, to create awareness about the dangers of the fake honey and about the benefits of the pure honey. We can share here. And based on our study, we found that if we consume fake honey for, for a long time, the fake honey actually can cause so, so many types of damages to, uh, to the uh, consumer. And in this study, we use a uh, red model. And from the red model, we found that fake honey can increase glucose level, can, in, can uh, significantly increase triglyceride and cholesterol level in the rat. And when we did a post-mortem um, to the rat, we found leave, uh, the rat's liver uh, uh, damaged uh, because of the fake honey consumption. Then I used our findings to convince our government how severe this problem in locally in our local market. You can see there's a fake honey that we collected from our local market. And because of the findings, uh, we managed to convince our government and then are uh, involved with the uh, um, policy making. We managed to produce our first Malaysian standard, how to uh, measure uh, authenticity status of our local honey, uh, how to uh, prevent, how to preserve, uh, preserve the quality of the pure honey through this Malaysian standard. And we also managed to uh, produce 10 years, uh, 10 years strategic plan to make sure we can fully utilize this monopoly culture activity to give benefit to the society and also to our country. 
And based on the uh, our um, uh, studies, um, we found in 2017, and uh, we got the data from Department of Agriculture. Uh, we can produce uh, this uh, uh, called value. It can show you value of our Malaysian honey from honey bee and also from stingless bee. You can see in 2017, to 2017, we can produce about almost 20 million ringgit, similar to almost 5 million US dollar. Uh, so we can see how big, uh, how big uh, economic impact of this uh, activity. And um, we just talk about honey. And actually, well, singles we also can produce uh, two other products, for example, bee bread and also propolis. And even we can see that uh, we can get more bee bread, more propolis instead of honey. And it can utilize and all these uh, stingless bee products, actually we can create more uh, benefits to the, our uh, society and our country. For example, it, uh, from our group, we are now, uh, we, aim, we are aiming to produce premium medical grade of uh, Malaysian stingless bee honey. Um, from, the stingler, from the propolis, we are working on the, uh, on the antimicrobial nanoparticles from the uh, propolis. And the current one, uh, we, um, we, are we are collaborating with uh, Yukululut uh, to produce, uh, to market our first energy bar uh, made from uh, bee bread, from stingless bee. So hopefully by early next, uh, next year, we can um, launch this product. And this uh, from uh, uh, the study, uh, we also uh, work together with um, um, Mr. Abu Hassan Jalil. I will call him Pa Abu. Then we can um, we can see the value of our single of the uh, stingless bee product, including like honey. Uh, one from one single lot, one single lot. Actually, we can produce at least uh, uh, RM two hundred fifty ringgit uh, per year. And this for propolis, uh, about um, USD dollar two hundred fifty. And this for bee bread. And we can get more if we involve in health and pharmaceutical industry. And also if you can use a stingless bee as one of pollinator agent. And because of this, we can see, uh, we can divide, uh, we can divide how this uh, stingless bee product can actually generate income to our country. And in total, we can uh, generate about half a billion every year from uh, from uh, from um, uh, from using uh, our basic data study and up to the um, to commercialization activity. And this uh, our ten year strategy plan, and we hope we can um, can strengthen more this multiculture activity in Malaysia. And we, now we are working with so many um, uh, research and developmental activity um, to make sure uh, to, to, to make sure we can sustain this uh, monopoly culture. Uh, we work together with IT, we work together with artificial intelligence people to make sure we can sustain this uh, monopoly culture in the, uh, um, the, until to long time. And as a conclusion, uh, that's a uh, we are like you know, we are happy to say, to share that uh, we can see a future of this modern culture, especially in Malaysia. Uh, we can use this uh, single bee as the one of excellent pollinator agent. Um, can provide uh, provide um, a call also can help uh, in terms of food security problem, and also we hope we can produce medical grade of the single bee products. And of course, we like to focus more on honey authenticity city checking to make sure only pure honey can supply in to, to our local market. And hopefully we can generate more income to give benefit to our society and our country. So that's all from me. Thank you. If you want to contact me, you can email direct me using the email. So thank you. Terima kasih Dr. Wan Iryani Ismail of University Malaysia Terengganu 
Malaysia also has a very interesting history since 1980. Uh, thank you so much for your initiatives to add to the economic income of your country. Honey authenticity in the market is really a big issue around the world. So hopefully we could work together to find solutions to this pressing issue. We look forward to having collaborations with you and your institution. And we are hoping to work together with you in making the most of the benefits of seamless of bees. Thank you very much, Dr. Ismail. Also, please feel free to post your contacts along with your institution and or affiliation in the chat box so that we could all form linkages and work together in improving seamless bee technology around the world. <coughs> So our next speaker is a faculty member of the Department of Food Technology of Universitas Padjadjaran, Indonesia. He finished his doctors on human nutrition, his master's on food science and bachelor's degree of nutritional science at IPB University at IPB. And his field of interest are nutritional science, food biochemistry, and bee products nutraceuticals. He is also a member of the Indonesian Apicultural Association, Food and Nutrition Society of Indonesia, Indonesian Association of Food Technologies, and Indonesian Society for Functional Food and Nutraceutical. Ladies and men, to talk on experiences on stingless bees in Indonesia, please welcome Dr. Mahani SPMSI. Okay. Okay, thank you, Dr. Julie. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you to Safe Network and International Webinar Organizing Committee for giving me this opportunity. Everybody, here I will share our experience about technopreneurship in stingless bee utilization for propolis in Indonesia. But first, uh, I apologize if my presentation difficult to understand because I am poor in English. Uh, maybe I also request to Professor Nofizar was pleased to help me translate my answer in English version on the discussion session. Okay, next slide. <coughs> Yes, uh, there are the factors that form the basis for determining commercialization of propolis. The first, social aspects, it refers to quantity of forest farmer group, which distributed on various uh, provinces in, in Indonesia. And the second, technological aspect, it is referred to rapid method for propolis extraction, then finally, entrepreneurial aspect. This aspect relates to managerial skill and business intuition. Uh, all three factors are very important for the successful commercialization of propolis. Okay, next slide. Mm -hmm. Okay, we will start from the first aspect, namely the social aspect. Recently, we involved forest farmer group at various provinces in Indonesia and at the Pematang Sianta district, North Sumatra province, we involved one group consisting of 10 person. And at the Bangka Tengah district, Bangka Belitung province, we involved two groups uh, consisting of 40 percent. We also involved a forest farmer group at the Pandegrang district, Banyumas district, and Sukadena district, Hulu Sungai district, and uh, especially one association of for, uh, forest farmer group at the South Sulawesi province. All we involved seven groups consisting of 1,640 uh, farmers in Indonesia. Okay, next. Yes. Uh, 
We started commercializing stainless B propolis since uh, 2011. At the time, most of 90% uh, propolis supplied from Luwu Utara district, South Sulawesi province. Now, uh, about 80% uh, propolis come from Luwu Utara district, South Sulawesi province. Then the remaining 20% is supplied by various provinces in Indonesia. And on the next, we hope to get more supplies from wider provinces in Indonesia. Okay, next slide. Okay, the second aspect uh, successful determining is the technological aspect. Here, the comparison extraction method of propolis. We showed by duration of extraction, start from 20 days by Muli and Maini. Uh, the next is uh, 10 days by Sosnowski, then 24 hours by Bankova, uh, then the next only 30 minutes by pan, mm -hmm. and then we develop method only five minutes. So mm -hmm. our method more effective and efficient. Application of our method can produce propolis more faster and cheaper. Mm -hmm. Okay, next mm -hmm. slide. All right. The third aspect successful determining is the entrepreneurial aspect. There are two important sub aspects, namely managerial skill and business intuition. Uh, on the managerial skill sub aspect, we must be skilled at managing finance, human resources, production, marketing, etc. That on the business intuition, we need improve habitual or abilities on prediction of change in the business world about market trends, maybe change of uh, governmental regulation, etc. We also continue to improve how to make marketing partners feel comfortable, how to make employees feel comfortable, and how to make a decision, etc. Okay. Uh, next slide. All right. This is the, another very important factor, namely supply chain management. We manage supply chain to get raw material propolis, which are sit, uh, suitable on the quantity, quality, mm -hmm. uh, continuity consistency and price. They are very important to the successfully of a business. So supply chain need to arrange for effective and efficient production. Uh, here, members group dirty on meliponiculture only. They also can selling honey on limited scale. And then head group dirty on meliponiculture, then manage group, and collecting harvest and post harvest handling or make propolis bar and selling honey on limited scale. And head of association similar to head groups, but have main duty selling propolis, honey, and bee pollen on large scale. So uh, we as an industrial practitioners we buy raw material or propolis bar large scale from the association. The next, we produce various stainless B derivative products. In this context, we have facilities legally propolis to meet consumer satisfaction. Okay, uh, next slide. Okay. All right, everybody. It is the chronology of 
propolis commercialization, we start from Ibik period, namely business unit at the campus Universitas Pajajaran. It, in, in this period, both extraction and production take place in the campus. It is very difficult period, especially how to market propolis. The next period is PIRT periods. Extraction activity still inside campus, but production take place on the home industry outside campus. In this period, Indonesian markets start believe, but the perception, the quality is slower. And now the UCOT period, we are happy. Indonesian market believe there is good quality Indonesian propolis. Okay, next. Okay, here we can show you the production achievement of propolis on the EBIC period. During three years on this period, we only produce liquid propolis less than 200 liters. Gray bars show production on the third years. You can see here the production only two times. So it is very small scale of production. From here, we start propolis commercialization. Okay, next slide. <clears throat> All right, it is the liquid propolis of the first year of EBIC. We only produce two brands, namely propolis Q and green propolis. Okay, next slide. Then it is the liquid propolis of the second and the third years of EBIC. We have four brands, namely both of old brand and which millennium propolis and jadid propolis trigona as additional brands. Okay, next slide. All right, here we show you current business model that we adopted. There are four components, namely Forest Farmer Group, EBIC, Alami, Forest involves student and take place propolis extraction on small scale. And CV Nutrima Sehat Alami acts as industry, take place scale up, prototyping, extraction, formulation, stabilization, bottling, uh, packaging, and product positioning and branding. And the next, uh, the next distribution company acts as marketer. We basically on end customer satisfaction with the best propolis. Now we have a uh, elephant distribution company as uh, partners. Okay, next slide. All right, here we show you the description of main propolis market players in Indonesia. Until 2019, Indonesian propolis occupy the seven ranks with market share less than 10 percent. But on 2020, we success to improve to second rank with market share more than 30 uh, percent. Actually, we are uh, very happy with this uh, achievement. Next slide. Okay. All right. We saw you that uh, recently we have 26 uh, POM TR distribution permit. 
uh, it is a fair, uh, fair uh, okay, next slide. Okay, I was worried about the sustainability of propolis raw material supply. It is encouraged me to try to produce the innovation of rapid split of stainless steel colonies. Okay, next slide. All right. We show you here on the top pictures are visiting from Sudan of the Netherlands and me selfie beside our meliponi culture. On the bottom pictures are propolis production facilities in our factory. Okay, next slide. Now uh, we penetrate to urban B, urban B stainless B. You can see here the stainless bee hive at the home of the citizen. Okay, next slide. Next slide. Yes. Uh, oh, sorry. Okay, yes, yes. Uh, it is the most popular of propolis product of Sevenutrima Syed Alami on the Indonesian market. There are four brands, namely Propolis Hepro, Propolis Essenzo, Propolis Prima Plus, and Propolis Trigona Katulistiva. Okay, next slide. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. Terima kasih Dr. Mahani SPMSI of Universitas Padhalharan Indonesia. Thank you very much for sharing your expertise on effective, efficient and fast extraction of propolis and really your institution has also conducted and uh, several researches in B byproducts. It's really amazing that you have already produced such quality products from Propolis. Congratulations on your achievements. Our next resource speaker is a professor at Warmadewa University, Indonesia. He finished his doctorate at Udayana University, Denpasar, Bali. And his field of expertise are agricultural technology, agricultural product technology, and food engineering and food science. He has been a lecturer since 1994 at Faculty of Agricultural Warmadewa University at Inter uh, Warmadewa International Program since 2016. And he was also the head of Food and Science Technology Department in, uh, from 2007 to 2011. He has also conducted researches as a member and a leader, and he has published several papers and has presented in several scientific seminars nationally and internationally. Uh, friends, uh, to talk on War Madewa CBSUA stainless steel. collaborative project, please welcome. Hello, can you hear my voice? Hello, can you hear my voice? Yes, you. Yes, Perhaps, sir. thank you. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everybody, everyone. Uh, before I would like to start uh, my presentation, uh, I would like to say uh, thank you very much uh, the, for the honorable uh, Dr. Abito Naferi, President of CBUSA, and also thank you for 
komisioner Dr. Alvin uh, dari Lags, Bahaya Education, CB USA, and also thank you very much for Dr. Ramona, uh, Director of Research CB USA, for supporting us to 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 done the a simple research collaboration. And also I would like to say thank you to Dr. Nobi Sarnasir and also for Dr. Josi inviting me as one of speaker in the international dinner today. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I would like to, to share my presentation. Uh, wait a minute. Just wait a minute. Email address or chat box. Can you see my slide? So? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, uh, this in this uh, international webinar, I would like to share my experience about the simple research collaboration, especially uh, the potency of stainless BB keeping development in Bali, Indonesia. Can you make a slide to yes, sure? This is already share. Slide yeah, yeah, show, yeah. I mean. This, this is slide show. I have already. Sorry. Can you see my, my slide? Yes. 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 This is a little yes, bit lower. Can you see my slide? So. It's so okay. okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. This collaboration research between Waramadio University, Bali, Indonesia, and Central Bicol State University of Agriculture, Bicol, Philippines, and also in this good opportunity, uh, also I would like to thank. To my my team, our team, Dr. Gusti Bagus Udayana from Warmadia University, and also Dr. Hamilin Hidalgo from CBSA Philippines, and doc, and also Dr. Amelia Nicolas, and Associate Professor Mia Bila Presendo from CBSA Philippines. And uh, we talk about the the stingless bee living in in Bali and also in Indonesia. Uh, we know that in Bali. Uh, whatever the, the the job, whatever the activity is uh, is following the rule in Bali, and because we have the philosophy for the Balinese people, we call that trihitakarana. Yeah, this trihitakarana, it is mean it is mean that how to make the harmonious relationship between human and God, between human and human, and also for heads his neighbor and also between human and nature and and also between human and environment. This point this point is that but that all the activity and all the the job in Bali is uh, following this uh, this philosophy in Bali because we believe that if we do this activity with this uh, philosophy we will get uh, uh, I mean that the good result and also with uh, maybe they feel happy. It is the point of how we, uh, uh, how the philosophy is uh, uh, we used to in, in Bali when we do the activity. And then uh, if we talk about the English behaving in development in Bali. Of course, we connected with the, you know, that the uh, uh, Bali Provincy Program. Uh, because in Bali development program also have uh, some priority program. One is, uh, one of is is, is, is to of the added value economic 
and also through with agriculture, tourism, industry, industry creative, and also the service productivity. Uh, all the time, uh, maybe you have know that that the development of Bali is uh, based on the tourism sector. According to the uh, you know that the, the data uh, statistic from from Bali that most than more 50% more the gross domestic product come from the tourism sector. But during the pandemic uh, COVID-19, the Bali government tried to create the tourism sector combined with the agriculture sector because agriculture sector is still lower than tourism sector. We combine with to create the new uh, program like the agritourism sector. From the agritourism sector, we think that uh, we make the what this mean that uh, uh, mainly tourism based on the stingless behaving in Bali. Of course, this is very important for Balinese uh, people because they can, you know, that increasing the family income and also they can uh, 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 create the new job in in Bali. And then uh, you know that uh, uh, we have. Uh, uh, you know that we have many problems in, in, in Bali, uh, like uh, how to develop the stainless beekeeping. In Trigona, uh, stainless beekeeping, in especially for Trigona, in Bali we call it uh, a clue, clue. This is a specific name we get uh, by, by the Balinese people. Uh, you know that uh, some problem like the limited population of beekeeper in Bali, and the second problem is Trigona stainless beekeeping. It's not yet to be main job for Balinese people. The third problem, honeybee products are not to be essential to consume by hum for human life. The fourth problem is most people in Bali do not know how to develop a well stainless beekeeping. The fifth problem, there is only a few tourism activity based on stainless beekeeping in Bali. And the last problem, the big careful knowledge level of vegetation and crop for developed trigona stainless beekeeping is still low. It is mean that why the, the stainless beekeeping is still limited in Bali because uh, we know that the stainless beekeeping is not still yet popular in Bali. Uh, that, that is different than the tourism sector like in hotel, restaurant, like. Uh, and for palm um, like uh, rice feed and this is the fufler job in bali but stainless be keeping this is not yet still fufler so there is nobody there is no people who want to do that as long as uh, out in how to develop the stainless be keeping and the second problem if we see about the honey production in indonesia uh, uh, we see, we, you can see in the unit in the picture that the production of honey in Indonesia there is a uh, fluctuation, and uh, the higher in, uh, production in 2015, but this production decreased until 2018. This is, uh, I mean, that uh, the production still low in Indonesia, including of Bali. This is the problem for our our country and also for the local Bali, because uh, if we see in the table that the data in the same year 2016, uh, we have the population, uh, total population 235 million population in 2018. So if uh, the total consumption, if we assume in that every uh, person consuming of honey 30 gram uh, per capita per year. So the total consumption in the 2016, this is 7,950 ton per year. But yeah, otherwise the, the, product, the production of honey in the same time in 2016, only 157, 274. This is still lower than production. So this doesn't mean, I mean that, that the the I mean that the production and the demand is not balanced. There is still supply and the demand is, is not balanced. So we have uh, you know that if we calculate between production and consumption national, this is uh, we have deficit of honey. The deficit is uh, 
7,800 suits on per year. This is the problem for our country and also for Bali has the tourism island because we need the honeybee product. Uh, although the product, the product of honey, honeybee product is more expensive than the regular product. But this is the problem. And the Indonesian government, uh, of course, find to sol uh, some solution. The first solution is, of course, how they will import uh, to fulfill the national consumption. And the second solution, I think, I think that this is the best solution, how to increase the production of honey, uh, stainless beekeeping in Indonesia. So if we can increase the production of honey, so we can minimize the import from some countries. And this is the, our general target in uh, about the, our research. The first is uh, the deployment of military model in Bali and the second increasing of economic impact in Bali rural area. And the third is increasing of collaboration research between Warmadewa and Yupski and CBUS Air Philippines. We have a purpose research in, 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 in this opportunity. The first purpose is assessment and analysis of factor that influences the Trigona stainless beekeeping development in Bali. And the second, determination of location potency for Trigona stainless beekeeping in Bali. This is our research method when we conducted the, our joint research with the team from uh, CBSU. Uh, the research location is in Bali province. We use the four regency, Badung, Karangasem, Tabanan, and Bangli regency. You know that Bali has, uh, Bali have its regency and one city, but we use the four regency because uh, this regency has, uh, you know, that. Uh, has a uh, more trigona stainless beekeeping than the other regency. And this, re and this research is a uh, very short time we conduct from August to November to in 2020. And our sampling method, we use the, using a survey interview questionnaire and also the documentation. And we use a respondent, uh, a leader from the uh, you know that uh, be careful and also the member from uh, each be careful and then the the data were, were obtained from the research we analyze with the descriptive method and with the uh, you know that the uh, uh, unit quantitative and qualitative approach this is the our result uh, uh, that we do we done in this year. This is the determination actor in Trigon Honey Beekeeping in Bali Provinci. According to uh, our uh, data from this research, uh, uh, we, you can see that the, you know that the government official forestry has higher pro, uh, score, uh, 0.278, this is the highest score, but the lowest score is given, was given by the be careful group uh, 0 0.062. This is the lower. It is mean that when we when we would like to develop of the melee tourism, for example, in Bali, uh, especially for the beginning of the be careful, they, they have uh, you know that uh, need to help for the government, especially the forest official, because they don't have enough the knowledge, they don't have the skill. They don't have enough capital. Uh, they don't have the equipment, enough equipment. So they need the government to help him for the beginner. And then you can see that the, the life sign, this is the kind of plan we found in the regency, especially in one regency, in Vadu regency. This is uh, three kind of plan. Uh, one of this is uh, we call that Santo Semon. Chrysanthus, yeah. There are two kinds of land. Uh, there is different color. One is the red color and the other one is a yellow color. We find in the Badung Regency, according to the interview with the, you know, that a leader we give her, uh, they said that this is the good plan. Because this plan 
can produce flower anytime. They can produce flower anytime. So, uh, so the big the the stainless bee, the trigon honey bee, will produce the honey uh, with higher result. Uh, and also, uh, you know that it is a little different than the other regency, like the you know that in Tabanan regency and also the Karangasam regency, Bangli regency, we cannot find this flame because like in Tabanan, we find, uh, you know, that the coffee flame, okay? this is the seasonal flame. So the production of the honey is lower than the Badum regency. And the bottom, in the bottom picture that, this is the one of a flame, we call that Antigonon Leptupus. Yeah. We call in, in Bali is Bunga, Bunga Air Mata Pengantin. Also, this is one of flan that can produce the flower as nectar resource. And then this is the, you know, the potential development model for Trigona honeybee cultivation that I will offer uh, for the next, uh, uh, in the future. Because uh, if you will, if I would like to to develop the, you know that the uh, de uh, militarism development in Bali, we have this model because this model have already, uh, you know that uh, assessment and also uh, analysis according to the data what I what I got from the this research, in the in the lab side this is the the plant like coffee plant that we find we found in the. Uh, Tabanan Regency and also the Bangli Regency and the Dead Regency like Tabanan, the plant, uh, the the nectar resource only come from the coffee plant. This is uh, it's not still not better because uh, the production of the you know that the honeybee is lower than uh, you the Badu Regency. And then this the, the in the table uh, determination of location potency for trigona honeybee keeping in Bali Provinsi with scoring assessment method. You can see that yeah we have the four agency location for our research: Dangli, Tabanan, Badung, and Karangasem. We have eleven components. Yeah, this component, of course, according to questionnaire that we fulfill by the uh, you know the beekeeper and a member of the beekeeper. And based on the data that we, we can see that Tabanan uh, is, has a similar score than the Karangasem 37, but the highest score is obtained from the Badung Regency 52, but the lowest score is uh, given by the Bangli Regency. You can, uh, we can see that uh, the Badung Regency only lowest, has a lower score in the uh, protection from predator. The score is two. It is mean that the when the Badung Regency, especially in Bali, uh, if we want to develop a meritorism, the Badung Regency, of, of course, uh, uh, the the you know that the big keeper group should be focused how to manage, how to protect the 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 whole honeybee colony from the predator. This is very important. Important, and then. Uh, you, know, uh, you know that is in, in this picture, of course, uh, the same like in the table one, this is the average of score. Yeah, you can see uh, Badung Regency give the higher average score, but uh, the lower score, average score is Bangli, uh, Tabanan and Karangasem is similar score. If we can, if we see about the, you know, that the picture in the live side, in the Bogdan picture, this is the colony bee book. Uh, this colony bee book we find uh, in the, in the, you know, in the location of our research in the four agency. This is the book we, uh, that they use for the uh, whole, uh, I mean, that the trigona beekeeping. We usually use of the word uh, and Sometimes uh, make from the you know that's the bamboo and also the uh, coconut. This is the familiar material uh, for made of colony bee bulb. because uh, maybe because the, the material is uh, easy to find in the nature and also in the their environment and also it's not too expensive in the for the beginning of beekeeper. And then the the center of the picture. 
we find the trigon honeybee in Badung Regency. This is the, the, the you know, the, the honeybee, the trigon honeybee that produces from Badung Regency. And we call in Bali, kle kle. Uh, you know, you can see this is different, different quality, yeah? Uh, especially about the color, the, the one uh, honey is uh, the light brown, but the, the other honey bee is the little bit dark brown. This is different quality. Uh, of course, I think that this is different taste and, diff and different uh, viscosity. Uh, I asked when the interview with the, you know, that leader beekeeper in Bardo Regency, I asked with them that how to make the, the same uh, quality or how to make the standard quality for the honeybee. They cannot say, they cannot answer the question because they think that the, uh, the honeybee is uh, very, you know, that is very, uh, uh, and then very important for human, for human life. So it don't care about the quality because uh, whatever the production, the honeybee will be uh, sold out. Yeah, so the quality standard is still not mentioned by the beekeeper group. But uh, I suggest for the beekeeper group that if you want to uh, you that uh, to increase the quality, you have to control the quality of the of the honeybee. So you can produce hun trigon honeybee with the same quality, with the same color with the same taste and the same viscosity. This is very important. How we can control the quality. Uh, I think that uh, as long as we can control the research of the feed, like the nectar, uh, we make the same, uh, uh, you know, the, the same plan in the same uh, location. And then the bottom uh, picture that uh, the honeybee we, we found in the Karangasam Regency, uh, this is produced from the trigona honey, uh, trigona honeybee. Yeah, uh, similar with the the quality and 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 also the the color is the, the same. Uh, based on the our simple research, uh, our uh, simple joint research, uh, we can uh, you know that find the conclusion, the post conclusion, and that. Bali Provinci has higher potency for male tourism development in the future. And the second conclusion, Badung Regency is one of Regency has the highest total score, 52 with average 4.73, indicated that Badung Regency to be one candidate for developing of male tourism model in Bali due to all of component aspects support to create a develop of trigona stainless behaving. And third is, uh, however, Badung Regency still needs to protection of the trigon honeybee from many predator in order to reduce the death of trigon stingless bee. And uh, on the other hand, the feeds availability, especially for the vegetation as nectar, pollen, and resin resources for growing the trigon stingless bee as well as water resource are the most important factor in the flow of military tourism in Bali, but the other factors need to be considered as well. This is the, our conclusion, and we can recommend it that according to the result, the report needs to for the research to evaluate the characteristic and readiness of the trigona stainless bee, we call the color color in Bali, we keeper in Badung Regency, toward male tourism development. That is our conclusion and recommendation for our joint research with CBUSA. Thank you and see you. At the time we will back to MC, thank you. A warm Madewa University, Indonesia. We hope that we can further strengthen our partnership and um, really we could enhance our ecotourism, tourism, and agro-industry endeavors of tri Trigona Stainless B or Kolo Kolo. So now ladies and, gen uh, ladies and men, let us now proceed to the open forum 
If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. You may type your questions in the chat box and I will read it for you. Or you also have the option to include your name and affiliation along with your question. Or you may click the clap reaction and I will recognize you to speak. Also, please note that only a few questions will be answered due to our time. The remaining questions or clarifications will be answered by the speakers after the webinar. So we have... Okay, so our first question here is for Dr. Mustoles from Tita Pau. For those who want to start taking care of stainless B, who should they approach? So if it's in the Philippines? Yeah, um, if it's in the Philippines, we are primarily willing to help you uh, with uh, your stainless steel levels in your area. I am talking about them, and he's giving us a good signal to really help people who are interested to work on stainless steel. Just write us, just write the president, and we will help you. Yes, thank you very much, Dr. Mustales. Um, I wonder if they have the same question in Malaysia. You can, I believe you can just contact our speakers for lectures. No. So, uh, this is also from CTP Nazareno at C. Tualo. We hope you can establish apiaries here in Mindanao, especially in Davao City. Is it possible, Dr. Mustales? <laughs> yes, uh, actually, we have members of the Beekeepers Association who are in the now and are here now starting with their stainless B. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's in Vigos, no? they have a farm there and uh, other other areas in the now. So, but if they cannot help you, we will help you at CBSA. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much, Dr. Mustales. Okay. Camera and video. Hello. Okay. Hello. Okay. Good thing I have a backup. Okay. So again, uh, the question is for Dr. Norman. However, I think Dr. Norman is not with us anymore. Dr. Ah, okay. Dr. Norman. Hello. Go ahead. Ah, uh, yes, sir. The the question is: Can we farm bees to the area that have a high human population? If yes, what are the risks that can affect the bees' growth? Uh, come, come again, I didn't get the first uh, portion of the question. 
Ah, yes, sir. Again, can we form these to the area that have high human population? If yes, what are the risks that can affect the bees growth? Yeah, I think yes, just like what uh, uh, Dr. Mang Fu uh, showed uh, in his uh, presentation. We can um, uh, do uh, uh, beekeeping as long as there are uh, um, flowering plants uh, as source of nectar and uh, and pollen uh, for them to uh, uh, grow uh, uh, and produce uh, honey and uh, beeswax etc. Yeah, the consideration is look around um, in your uh, area if there is enough uh, uh, bee plants, meaning uh, flowering plants. Uh, Especially so distinctless, uh, they are sturdy uh, as against uh, Milifera. They are low in uh, maintenance. Uh, they are strong, uh, I suppose, versus uh, Apis Milifera. The answer is yes. Yes, thank you very much, Dr. Norma. So definitely we can grow bees at a highly populated area. Okay, next question here is from, from Myanmar, Dr. Kiki Malar Mint. Uh, his question is, did you use any diet for bee rearing or use natural one for Dr. Norman also? For uh, Dr. bee rearing, actually yeah. during dirt period, meaning to say there is uh, no uh, abundant uh, available uh, bee plants, uh, other uh, uh, beekeepers, they resort to uh, feeding the, uh, the bees with... Uh, uh, artificial uh, feeding, like for example, uh, syrup solution, and for a source of pollen, the uh, others are uh, are making use of uh, soybean patties, etc. It depends on the availability in the area, but definitely during that period, they need to be fed with the artificial source uh, to, to maintain the uh, population of your uh, of your colony. Yes, I think Dr. Mustales would like to add to Dr. Norman's answer. Go ahead, ma'am. Okay, anyway.
Hello. Hello. Hello, we're on. Okay, sorry for the uh, interruption. Okay, a while ago, I was trying to uh, add some explanations to the question. <laughs> to the question on the food. Uh, for stingless bees, we do not feed. In the beaker, we do not feed our bees, our stingless bees. So we have good quality honey produced in our uh, region. Why? Because we have a continuous supply of nectar and pollen from our coconut, which is uh, flowering year round. Okay? So we suggest that we, we are discouraging the feeding of the stingless bee so that we can produce the good kind of honey which is actually uh, tangy, we call it tangy or the sweet and sour taste of stingless bee honey. Okay? So no feeding, no feeding for us. However, there are some, uh, some farms wherein they are forced to feed, but definitely our university is not, pro uh, we are not, uh, because of typhoon, sometimes they have to feed. Like for example, this month, we had a, we were reached by two typhoons, but still, what we usually do in the university is to migrate our bees to areas where there are no, uh, there, are still, there are still coconut found in the area. So we don't have to feed our bees. Thank you. Yes, uh, we apologize that we cannot accommodate all the questions. However, you may freely contact them. I apologize that we cannot accommodate all the questions. You can just message our resource teacher in their respective email account. So thank you very much to uh, all our prolific lecturers for Thanks. sharing the, the fruits of your hard labor, all for the love of sharing and contributing to the body of knowledge. Much gratitude is given to the speakers by our participants. So at this juncture, ladies and men, please uh, forgive us. The synthesis of today's webinar, please welcome the director for the research division, Dr. Ramona Isabel S. Ramirez. Today, talk who are here with us in this webinar to the organizers of Safe Network, led by Professor Dr. Novisar Nasir and Dr. Rabindra Joshi, and from CBSUA, headed by our president, Dr. Alberto Enna Perry, to Dr. Aldrin A. Darilag of the Commission on Higher Education Philippines, to our distinguished resource speakers, to our dear participants. Bees be with you all. Stingless bees are of great value. As there are no bees, there will be no man. Today's undertaking is a recognition of the greater importance of bees to mankind. 
this international No speak. To disseminate the state of the art in beekeeping with an intent of transferring technologies and sharing practices around the globe that may be beneficial to the participants, thereby promoting the promise of beekeeping. It aims to upscale the technology for international utilization. As we have witnessed, beekeeping is a promising venture. In the message of Dr. Naperi and Dr. Darilag, they undoubtedly recognize the important role of bees, particularly highlighting initiatives and the benefits it gave to its keepers. Dr. Maria Dulce Mustoles from the Philippines oriented us on Philippine stingless bees specifically sharing the CBSUA journey on stingless beekeeping, particularly on how it emerges into the university banner program. Her presentation enabled us to gain insights on research, extension, and income generating initiatives for economic development. Dr. Mustoles have successfully conveyed the idea that the stingless beekeeping in the academe can cut across instruction, research, and extension. Dr. De Jesus of Pisao, Philippines, shared their experience on the promotion of beekeeping and bee products and byproducts development. The highlight of his presentation is how they were able to develop the amazing products that were extended to their immediate communities. In the talk of Professor Lilia Pasiona, she shared the community-based approach to beekeeping, conveying the idea that the stingless bee technology can be extended to the community by providing trainings and technology transfer. Professor Juan Ismail considered this a wealth of Malaysia, sharing their country initiative towards development of the technology. She recognized the significant contribution of partners in the conduct of bee-related researches. Particularly disseminated is the commercial value of Malaysian stingless bee products and how it generated income for their country. Dr. Mahani SP focused his presentation 
on technopreneurship in stainless bees, sharing aspects of commercialization of propolis. He emphasized the participation of social groups and the importance of availability and preparation of supply in the commercialization. Dr. Pasik Manku relates beekeeping to the philosophy of Balinese people life, recognizing the relationship between human, nature, and environment. He shared the focus and findings of their program on increasing added value on industry economic through agriculture, tourism, industry creative and service productive, a significant knowledge share is the development of model of cultivation and militarism. Presentation of the speakers only lead into one significant message that bees are promoters of development. It is part of human existence and is a great contributor to economic growth in the ASEAN region. All of us have realized that indeed we have our own ways of generating technologies but we share the same vision of do doing it for community development ladies and gentlemen this webinar is a manifestation of the shared commitment of all of us in the asean region to the welfare and economic development of our people thank you very much and god bless us all let us continue what we have started through collaboration. Thank you very much, Dr. Ramon. Dr. Ramon. <laughs> Thank you very much for that wonderful uh, synthesis. So to formally close the program and to give the con concluding remarks in behalf of the Global Coordinator of Safe Network, Professor Dr. Novisar Nazir, please welcome Dr. Hanilin Hidalgo of CBSCA. Hello. Yes, from Hani. We can hear you. Yes, thank you. Um, may I share with you the the closing message of Dr. Novizar Nasir because at the moment he is on board now going to his hometown. So um his excellency commissioner Dr. Al Al Aldrin Darilag. Um Dr. Alberto Naperi, CBSUA President. Um, Dr. Ravindra Joshi, Webinar Coordinator and Distinguished Speakers, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of SAFE, I would like to say thank you very much to Commissioner Dr. Alvin Adrian Darilag for supporting this event in the Central Dakota State University of Agriculture for hosting this webinar. Thanks also to all the speakers, Professor Lilia C. Pashona, Dr. Maria Dulce Mostoles, Dr. Norman De Jesus, Dr. Juan Iriani Juan Ismail, Dr. Mahani of the University of Pajajaran, and Dr. Aigedi Pasek Manku from uh, Warmadewa University, Indonesia. And to Dr. Ravindra Joshi, we appreciate you for the strong effort to conduct this webinar. Um, stingless bee is one of the most important pollinators of native plants and economic crops in tropical, and tropical parts of the world. They not only establish large perennial colonies in complex organisms, but also have a diverse nesting biology. The economic utilization of a total of 60 stingless bee species in Asia has been reported. Safe Network encourages stingless, stingless bee collaboration in research and development among members. Thus, the economic value of stimulus bee continues to increase while still paying attention to its social and environmental impacts. Again, thanks Mr. President and colleagues from CBSUA for hosting this seminar. Thanks also to all the speakers and all the participants. Thank you. That's uh, coming from Dr. Mag Thank you very much, Dr. Novisar. 
Dr. Hidalgo, our lecturers, as well as the participants for joining us in this international webinar. I'm certain that we were able to actively listen to the lecturers, and we hope that in your own little way, we could also be part of the Be Lovers and Enthusiasts group. Please be with you. So everyone, before we leave, please open your videos for our group photo. Please hold your smiles for 10 seconds. 10 seconds. Please bear with us. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for bearing with us, even with the technical difficulties. <laughs> Thank you for staying. We, we are only 100, 200 participants in total. Okay, so ready? 10 seconds starts now. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, Four, two, three, 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 two, one. Two, one. Yay. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. 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 Don't forget to fill out the evaluation form <laughs> that will be sent to your respective thank email addresses. Thank you, thank you. Happy New Year. 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 Happy New Sa tawag sa inyo, Angel Galang. Thank you so much po. Thank you everyone. Thank you everyone. Thank you very much. Please keep in touch everyone. Thank you po. Merry Christmas. Stay safe. God bless. Good gift to us. And it's us all. Safe network. Pangkawakas. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Happy New Year. Be happy. Thank you. Happy New Year. 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 Happy New Year, Happy New Year, 3G. Salam dari Indonesia, salam dari Indonesia, Kalimantan Barat. Salam dari Kalimantan Barat, Sambas. Temu, temu, Pom. Iya. 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 Iya.